Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins wants to be traded. After being handed the franchise tag, T. wants more stability. Hayden, he wants a long-term deal. He wants to be part of this club that wants big wide receiver money. Uh, we are now over a day into NFL for agency. We've seen other players traded, other players signed, and T. Higgins is still a Cincinnati Bengal. Is it going to stay that way? I think it will stay that way. Just to rewind all the way, reminding people, franchise tag, it's $21 million for wide receivers this year. It creates a ton of leverage for the teams. You are fined if you miss time in the season. He'll basically lose a million dollars for every game that he would potentially miss in a, in a holdout. I don't think we're going to get there because we've seen players, even on the Bengals, look at Jesse Bates, Jonah Williams last year. He was mad going to right tackle. They ask for trades, and then they play on it. And the reason why is because the franchise tag is all the leverage that the Bengals need. So obviously, T. Higgins wants his money, but the franchise tag exists for this reason. And I think the big thing on the Bengals side, they have all the leverage. The Bengals say, T. Higgins helps us win the Super Bowl right. this year. We're in a good position to try to win the Super Bowl right now. So why would we trade a player away uh, when we're in this position? Yeah, I think it's an interesting spot because we've seen it happen with 31 other teams where, especially at the wide receiver spot, I want a big deal. I want to be traded to a team that will give me a big deal. And then that player gets traded and gets the big deal. We need to keep in mind that not all 32 organizations work the same. And this is from the Athletics beat writers, quote, Remember, they didn't pretend for a second they were going to try to do a long-term deal with T. Higgins. They tagged him as soon as the period opened. In fact, the last time that the Bengals and T. Higgins had contract negotiations was last March. It hasn't happened since then. So I understand where, with what you're saying, that the Bengals right now feel like their best choice, their best path of getting to the Super Bowl is a healthy Joe Burrow, which... Have we gotten that? Uh, Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and bring the band back together and hopefully you can do it from there. Um, do you think that's short-sighted? I mean, the goal is to win the Super Bowl and most teams don't have a chance of winning the Super Bowl this year. The Bengals do. So like decreasing your odds of winning the Super Bowl from 10% to 6% is a drastic difference if you're trading away T. Higgins. Uh, and, and then we get into the other part is who, who wants to be buying T Higgins how much like like how much money does he want we don't know right. what that is like for example Michael Pittman he got a 3 year deal 74 million dollars 46 million dollars is guaranteed AJ Brown I think you said had 57 million dollars in guaranteed money he's going to want 50 plus million dollars of course T Higgins he's kind of on that that range is he a true number 1 is he a number 2 is he a number 2 on a championship winning team like the Bengals I think it's kind of where I'm at with him. Obviously, some teams would want to want to trade for him, but I'm not sure if we're going to get first round trade offers for T. Higgins for the right to pay him all this money. And I think that's what the Bengals would want uh, in exchange for losing some odds of winning the Super Bowl this year. Apologies to the audience for waiting until three minutes and 30 seconds to throw up T. Higgins highlights out there. Um, I actually think he came off a down year now. You can say that for multiple reasons. Uh, Joe Burrow not being a part of this team uh, is a major factor for that. And even starting the season injured is a huge part of that. Um, T. Higgins going to a different roster and being the go-to primary wide receiver is a different environment than the one he is on right now. Uh, with that said, um, there's also the element of this year's wide receiver draft class. And... A team I don't think is going to blow the doors off of Bengals decision makers doors uh, and or rooms, I should say, and offer a first round pick plus for T Higgins, because I'm sure they all are stacking their wide receiver boards and saying, well, what if this guy falls to, I don't know, pick 23 with the Houston Texans or pick 27 for the Arizona Cardinals, right? Or pick 32 for the Kansas City Chiefs. I do think the page turns once you get into round two, and that's naturally because you think once the first round's over, who is available? Who, who can be there? And the Carolina Panthers with pick 33 or pick 39, I believe that they would want to trade one of those selections for T. Higgins if he was available. And the great Jonathan Jones has somewhat suggested as much, but it's the Bengals end that they are basically not even answering the phones at this moment to even consider a trade. Um, 
And that's a sticking point mm-hmm. in the entire conversation. Yeah, it's a franchise tag. The leverage is on one side here. And I think it ultimately is the Bengals' decisions. There's nothing really Tegan can do about it, except that if he doesn't sign the franchise tag, which I don't think he has actually signed it himself yet, he doesn't. Ha- he's not going to get uh, fined uh, if he misses training camp. The fines in his situation would come once the games are actually being missed. So we, this thing could linger where he's holding out, holding out, holding out, and then showing up like what like Josh Jacobs did last year, for example. Um, but yeah, I, I think like, I don't know. I think if I'm in the Super Bowl window like this, I'd rather have T Higgins than a second round pick, especially if you're going to get compensatory picks uh, on the back end in, in a year from now. Well, but maybe, I mean, we also know the compensatory pick formula can, if you weigh in signing mm-hmm. other players, then that takes away for players leaving. I don't know. Joe Goodberry is maybe one of the best fans of any team out there in terms of being realistic. And he has said it from both ways that it's not going to happen in terms of the Bengals trading him. However, if a team offers a first round pick or an early second round pick, which by the way, that's where T Higgins was drafted back in the day, then they would want it. You know, they would want that compensation. And I think it might be easier for a fan to say that because they are, you know, not thinking about it from a window to win necessarily. And it's the long term view. (sighs) I don't know. It's um. What do you think about T. Higgins as a player, by the way? Because like I go back and I look through some of his individual numbers, and sure, he's six four, two nineteen, just turned twenty five years old or about to. The one number that always stands out to me of if T. Higgins is going to have like an outstanding day or an average day is if he made his contested catches. I'm not saying he's purely a contested mm-hmm. catch receiver, but we look over the last few years. This past season, he only converted thirty five percent of his contested catches. That was up to fifty eight percent in twenty twenty two. And then in 2021, that was at 42% and 34%. He is more than that, but that takes difficult grabs and turns them into big gains, especially back in that 2020 to, you know, 2021 era where they were launching passes down. Mm-hmm. I think he's a top 30 wide receiver. He might be a top 20 ish wide receiver. Um, I think that if you're trying to win the Super Bowl, I think he's probably your second best pass catcher, but not every single team is in a position like for your Panthers, for example, trading for T Higgins, he can be the number one for a long time. Um, but I think that he is not quite quick enough, like most number true number one difference making wide receivers like Jamar Chase would be. So it's kind of like right on that periphery. Uh, it's, it's always complicated with the the franchise tag players that are being traded because like someone like Brian Burns, for example, he, he signs a hundred million dollar contract. Almost all of that is guaranteed. And then he fetches a second round pick. So like for somebody that's like not as valuable, according to uh how often these or how much money these guys get paid that you would trade a second round pick for the same price that Brian Burns goes for. And everyone agrees that Brian Burns is more valuable than T Higgins. That's where I think it gets a little more complicated. And I think that he, it would be more of like a late second round pick um, going back to the Marquise Brown conversations. Uh, that was a Marquise Brown and a, a hundredth overall pick coming in for a first round pick. And there was a little more cost control. Now we're at the point where we have to pay T Higgins all of that money Comparing to AJ Brown, I think is unfair because AJ Brown, I think, is in that tier or two above what T. Higgins is as a as a prospect. So I think it's just at this intersection where I think it's a mid to later second or early third round pick, Oof. and not the first <laughs> round pick that the Bengals would want. Yeah, I guess my thing always with the guaranteed money is that is attributed to the position, less so like the individual player, because edge rushers, like six of them are getting more guaranteed money than even the top wide receivers are. That's because they're worth more. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think Tyreek Hill is worth more than Brian Burns and Tyreek Hill gets less guaranteed money than Brian but Burns. But T Higgins is nowhere near Tyreek Hill. That's kind of, yeah, my yeah but, 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 but if what you're down. saying, but if what you're saying is because this guy gets more guarantees and he's more valuable, yes, like, Yes, are you, but, but you're talking works. about it from a contract works. standpoint and yes. not necessarily the, the talent standpoint, like the player impact standpoint. I think if for, let's use the Panthers, for example, if they were trading Brian Bird straight up for T Higgins, I think that the, the side that's getting T Higgins would want more. You're giving away Brian Burns because he's worth more. So I think that the fact that he got a second round pick, an early second round pick this offseason would suggest to me that T Higgins probably worth closer to the 50th, 60th overall pick, uh, and not the 39th overall pick. Yeah, I, I, I guess my concern or issue with that is, again, Tyreek Hill has $72 million of guarantees, A.J. Brown $57 million, 
Stefan Diggs, 70, I could sort it differently. Um, and then if we look at the edge rushers, uh, Nick Bosa has $122 million of guarantees. TJ Watt, 80. Joey Bosa had 102. Miles Garrett, 100. Like you're basically saying Montez Sweat and Tyreek Hill are well, the same importance for a team. Age also. The Tyreek Hill, this is signed as a 30 year old, not 25. Yeah, old, my Martez, Montez Sweat's 28. Like, I, I, to me, just that guaranteed money, you will have to do it based on the position and not necessarily like the impact of the individual player. Because why would a team then go and give $122 million guaranteed to a wide receiver? But they yeah. have to do it. But they, like, but but the why market, would a team give $87.5 million guaranteed to a wide receiver? There's no, we, they don't have to. But right, but we see you the have to do it with an edge because relative, and that's because right. the market's just signing. It's not the market; it's the the whole market. That's why wide receiver prices have gone up and running back prices have gone down over time. It's because they think the position is not as valuable. So edge rusher right now, for the premier guys, is more valuable than the wide receivers according to the market. But they are going for different prices, like Brian because Burns the market's just, saying that. But then, but if but that doesn't make any sense. If wide receivers are being traded for first round picks and then getting less guaranteed money on top of that. But then edge rushers are going for second round picks, but then getting more guaranteed money on top of it. I don't understand how that's aligning with what you're saying. I don't think the Panthers got a good deal for trading away. Brian Burns is, is part of the reason. And I, I think we haven't seen a Joey Bosa level player get traded. Like what AJ Brown is. AJ Brown's a top five edge or wide receiver in the league. We haven't seen a, a top five. Uh, Brian rusher. Burns is a top five edge rusher. He's close. He's right around that periphery, certainly. Because I, I, I would rank it Nick Bosa, TJ Watt, Miles Garrett. If we're just talking about like second contracts, sure. Max Crosby, mm -hmm. and then probably put Brian Burns there. That's yeah, fine. That's right with me. Yeah, the Panthers should have got more. Well, yeah. Okay. That's a whole other conversation. Um, okay. That does it. Should we listen to Paul Dana before we get out of here? Just a yeah. beat writer's perspective? Let's he's do some, he's some Bottom line is something that you have said and they have repeated and it was told to me yesterday as this thing blew up. They want to win the Super Bowl next year. Mm -hmm. They believe the best path to do that is with T. Higgins. Mm -hmm. So they don't really talk about trading T. Higgins because that's not the plan. The plan mm -hmm. is trying to win the Super Bowl with a team that can win the Super Bowl in 2024, and T. is the guy to help them get there. There, no one is ever going to sit here and say never. Okay. If some team shows up and offers you a crazy package and you could get Malik neighbors and, and another thing and like some throw, like uh, anybody can be blown away. Everyone sure. has their price. The likelihood of them trading T Higgins is tiny. Okay. Final question is 2024 the last season of T Higgins on the Cincinnati Bengals? Well, here's the pesky thing about that damn franchise tag is you can apply it more than once. It would cost about $25 million the next time, which is probably uh, the, the, close to the tipping point for that situation. But um, yeah, I think this is the point is last year they had Joe Burrow on his bigger ish contract. He saved some money, moved some of it around to get T Higgins for 2023 and 2024. And then at that point, it's time to pay Jamar Chase. Fascinating. Fascinating. Again, all these teams work differently, and the Bengals, as we have seen through either re-signing or not signing free agents at certain positions uh, and letting ones go because they don't want to structure things certain ways, but then now on the Joe Burrow deal going against how they previously didn't structure things, but then at what point do you continue to make those exemptions? Is it for a player like T. Higgins? Because then there can be other players at other positions that are of equal talent to T. Higgins, and then they'll be like, I want the same thing. Or do you only stick that for Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. All the decisions. All the decisions. All right. GM. Go and watch our other videos. Do it. Do it. Hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up. And we will catch you on the next one.